thanks, Patrick, for uh, taking the time to be here today. We have a lot of questions about uh, the, the harvest reporting aspect of the proposal. Sure. Can you give me a quick rundown of that part of this larger licensing proposal? Sure. I think it's uh, probably best to start uh, with a bit of background. You know, we have we've have a system that's developed over time to meet the needs that seemed appropriate uh, at the time we put the re various requirements in place. And uh, we've learned over time that, that some of those um, requirements uh, kind of led to some inefficiencies or impracticalities mm -hmm. and uh, probably led to some, some confusion for hunters. So right. what we're proposing now is to, to move to a more consistent approach where we're requiring um, or we're proposing to require all... Um, moose, elk, deer, black bear, uh, wild turkey, and wolf coyote hunters, at least those that require tags, mm -hmm. uh, to provide uh, reports on their activity and harvest, okay. uh, as well as move to more consistent timelines uh, for the reporting, mm -hmm. um, to develop a uh, scheme in the new licensing system that would track whether uh, an individual has filed a report, okay. and then could automatically uh, apply consequences if they don't. Mm -hmm. And uh, I guess the other big part of it is to move to more um, automated or electronic channels for reporting. Okay. So uh, to uh, telephone and online in particular. Oh, okay. Um, so each year, thousands of Ontarians buy hunting license. Um, you know, some will harvest an animal. Not me, but some will. Uh, <laughs> yep. Some people will hunt and will be unsuccessful at harvesting an animal. And others won't even hunt for whatever sure. reason. They don't have the time. They get sick, whatever the case may be. So... You're proposing, or the ministry is proposing, that if anybody buys one of those licenses that you mentioned, they have to report. Yes, we're proposing all hunters to report it. And it's critical that, that we get information, that, you know, it really is just as critical that we get information from those that bought a license and didn't hunt, as we do from those who uh, bought a license and hunted and didn't harvest, as mm -hmm. well as those that did harvest. Right, yeah, yeah, okay. So you're proposing the deadline that you mentioned, um, as it stands, 14 days after the end of a season. Is that correct? That's right, yes. Okay, so if I'm hunting in, for instance, uh, Wildlife Management Unit 65, where it's a very short moose season there, it ends in mid-October, let's say, are you proposing, I guess, would the deadline be 14 days after the end of the season in that unit, or would it be 14 days after the end of the provincial moose season, so end of December sometime? Yeah, it would be 14 days from the end of the season. Um, because we have uh, party hunting uh, rules, you know, right. allow folks to continue to participate even after they've used their tag. Um, you know, we need to give folks um, uh, the opportunity to provide information on all their activity and harvest. And so, um, yeah, it would be from the end of the season. So even though in the example you mentioned, WMU 65, mm -hmm. where the season ends in October, uh, we would still require it uh, to be 14 days from the end of the moose season. Okay. And uh, that 14 days is, is kind of consistent, or it's the most uh, common timeline we use currently. Mm -hmm. It allows hunters to, to get home after the hunt and still provide the report in a, a fairly timely manner. Right. Um, but as with all reporting, you know, we will be encouraging hunters, um, as we do now, you know, provide that report as soon as you know you're done. Right, yeah. Okay, fair enough. So, um, you know, 14 days, that's a, a fairly standard timeline. It's a fairly standard, um, you know, deadline, I guess. But because uh, different seasons for different species in different areas, they all kind of end at a different time. Right. Uh, for, for at least in certain cases. So will these... Uh, I guess the deadlines be printed annually anywhere, say in the, the hunting regulation summary or online or any, anything like that? Yeah, we're looking for a, a lot of opportunities to communicate, uh, you know, if we do move forward with the changes. Uh, so we're looking at possibly a special section in the hunting rig summary mm -hmm. uh, where we publish the deadlines so you know exactly if I happen to be a spring turkey hunter when my deadline is right. or a, a fall bear hunter or, uh, for example, fall, fall moose hunter, whatever the, the hunt is you're participating in, you'll know exactly what those deadlines are. Um, but other opportunities we are looking for, um, uh, we'll be looking to put that information online. We do uh, currently have a, a hunter reporting or, or harvest reporting right. webpage. Mm -hmm. We'll be looking to put that there, possibly communicating some of that information on the license itself. Okay. Um, uh, or tag, I should say. And, um, and also, uh, the new system, one of the real benefits uh, of the new system is the ability to communicate directly with hunters, at least for those that are willing to uh, share an email address. Oh, so we yeah. can remind them... Um, uh, well before the close of the season, as well as, you know, within a uh, short time of the, the ultimate deadline, that uh, they have an obligation. Instead of having to send out those individual reminders through the mail every time. That's right. right okay. So, I personally, uh, I understand the importance of reporting, having done that job in, in the past. But I think part of the reason that 
um, reporting rates are declining, at least this is my personal opinion, is that the government does a fairly poor job, to be honest, in communicating the, uh, the importance and the utility of that information, how it's used and things like that. So you're proposing a deadline on hunters, a 14-day deadline for hunters. Um, is there a commitment from the government to improve communication with hunters in terms of reporting back to them, you know, the, the results of the moose harvest and number of hunting days per WMU and so on, things like that. Is there a deadline that you're also imposing on yourselves? So we, we haven't, I guess, uh, specified any particular deadline, but certainly uh, with the approach that we've proposed, we'll have the ability to communicate it back much more quickly to hunters. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, uh, our desire is to, uh, to have a system where we could, within some short time at the end of the season, uh, put out, for example, a media release and say, right. this is the outcome of the season, and, mm -hmm. and I think hunters would appreciate that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we do have that information there, and we're looking to update that. Um, but yeah, we do need to do a better job of communicating the results back to hunters, as well as communicating to hunters, ultimately, how we use that hunter reporting data right. in developing quotas and setting seasons, for example. Okay, so this is uh, part of a broader proposal, the renewal of the licensing automation system, and it's going to take some time for that new system to be in place. Can you uh, provide me with any detail about how this, uh, sort of the, the harvest reporting aspect of it will be phased in? Yeah, we, we recognize it's critical that hunters know, you know, if we move forward with these changes, exactly what the changes are mm -hmm. and how, um, what the consequences could be for them and, and uh, so they're well aware. And so we've talked about if we move forward, we would uh, look at a phase-in approach. Um, and so the new licensing system, for example, is um, uh, set to come in around 2019. Mm -hmm. um, we would be looking at a phase-in, uh, for example, that could, in 2019, allow hunters to use the new system based on the new reporting timelines right. um, and yet not apply consequences uh, that may come that year, uh, but directly um, notify those individuals that may not provide the report in the required timeline that, hey, you're in violation this year or you've, you've missed the deadline this year, if this happens in the future, these are the consequences. Oh, okay, fair enough. So um, you're also proposing to eliminate uh, reporting via mail, which means that there won't be any more postcards right. sent to hunters in the mail. Uh, for many hunters, myself included, those postcards serve um, uh, a second purpose, which is a reminder to report. If I stick it on my fridge, I'm going to see that and be like, oh, I have to report. Mm -hmm. um, so. Can hunters expect any other kind of reminders under this new system, given that you're eliminating that part? Yeah, so we are eliminating the postcards, and unfortunately the postcards, uh, you know, they haven't proven successful, I guess, at reminding hunters, even when we've sent a follow-up in some cases. Okay. So um, what we're looking at uh, doing is ensuring that hunters are aware upfront of the requirements, and I think also by providing um, having more consistent requirements and, and timelines for reporting. Right. Uh, hunters will, will uh, better remember that, hey, I'm hunting uh, one of these species of game and, and there's a, a requirement to report across many of them. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, again, uh, we'll look to communicate uh, any changes in the reg summary online, possibly on tags, as well as, um, again, for those individuals willing to share an email address, uh, we can directly notify them uh, of the deadline. Okay, so you're, you're, you're proposing to completely eliminate that mail aspect of, of that, that part of your business. So yes. hunters are going to be left with what avenues to report? Right. Um, yeah, as we discussed earlier, uh, the focus will be phone and uh, on online. Okay. Um, they can use their smartphone not only to call in and report, but um, the, uh, the actually the website will, um, it won't be a true app, but it is, um, is, is smartphone friendly. Okay. And so they can provide their information uh, through the website on their phone. Mm -hmm. um, but we are also looking at um, uh, options for those limited number of individuals that may not be able to provide the reports by um, phone or online. Okay, good. So looking at the current system that we have in place, you know, there's a mix of, there's some existing mandatory reporting requirements for, for certain species in certain areas. There's some voluntary reporting. Um, we know that, you know, statistically, we don't actually need responses from every single hunter in order to make management decisions. We don't need that level of detail for the most part. Um, so why make it mandatory? What's, what's the value of making it mandatory? Sure, yeah. So survey science shows us we need about 70% response to overcome any bias that we might get with a certain response. We know that generally those hunters that are successful are more apt to respond than those that are unsuccessful. Right. Um, but um, uh, in this particular case, um, or, or the case that we're in now, like with some species, uh, where we have a limited number of hunters in a given wildlife management unit or a limited number of tags, we really do need nearly 100% response 
uh, to have a reliable estimate for those areas. Okay. Um, and I think by moving to um, a mandatory requirement and a more consistent requirement, it'll provide that uh, certainty or clarity for hunters again that um, kind of keeps it top of mind that I have an obligation. All right, fair enough. So, I mean, we hear from a lot of hunters, at least moose hunters specifically, calling for mandatory reporting uh, for all harvest. Um, I can tell you that support for mandatory reporting, at least from the people that I've spoken to, and it's a lot of moose hunters, uh, is largely dependent on a commitment from the government to, uh, uh, I guess, try to obtain harvest estimates from all harvesters, including uh, you know, our, um, uh, our friends in the Indigenous community. So is there a commitment from the MNRF to improve efforts or go a little bit, uh, take that extra step and go a little bit further to try to get that harvest information from Indigenous harvesters? Yeah, I certainly understand that perspective. We, um, you know, as a ministry, we're, we're committed to um, respecting Aboriginal treaty rights as affirmed by the Constitution Act and, and the Fish and Wildlife Act uh, Conservation Act and regulations are uh, subject to those rights right. protected mm -hmm. under the Constitution. Mm -hmm. But, um, and so while we don't have the authority to uh, require um, Aboriginal harvesters yeah. uh, hun under their rights uh, to provide that information, we, uh, we have been working uh, through efforts like Moose Project and others mm -hmm. to gather that information because we're, we're all seeking to achieve, uh, you know, some common, uh, common interest with respect to moose and other species, so. All right, fair enough. So let's talk about consequences. You mentioned uh, consequences a couple times earlier. So if a hunter fails to complete their report within a given timeline, what happens? Yeah, so what we've proposed is, uh, and again, I mentioned that the system itself can track whether an individual has uh, responded or not. Right. Um, what we've proposed is if uh, they don't file the report, that they may be prevented from purchasing a license or licenses in a, in a future year. Mm -hmm. um, We'll also maintain the set fines that could be applied in some certain circumstances. So thank you for taking the time to uh, answer some of these questions. It's a, it's a very uh, large, it's a very detailed package, uh, and we've really just scratched the surface of some of these uh, questions that hunters have, but I appreciate uh, you taking the time. Thank you very much, Mark.